They used to tell me I was building a dream And so I followed them on When there was earth to plow Or guns to bear I was always there Right on the job All right, A Pushers, welcome back to another episode of Mr. B History. I'm Mr. B. This is the Great Depression. Ooh, you, you, you. <clears throat> Chapter 24 notes. Uh, the Great Depression lasted from 1929 all the way to 1939. What a great song. Brother, can you spare a dime? We're using that in the intro. Hope you appreciate it. Once I built a tower to the sun, brick, rivet, and lime. Once I built a tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Tough times during the Great Depression. What caused the Great Depression? Great question. Uh, the immediate cause of the Great Depression is the stock market crash of 1929. It's a turning point date. Um, it was the Wall Street crash. During the 1920s, there was a boom market, which encouraged millions of people to invest in the stock market. It was easy. You just put your money in the stock market and then take it out a couple of months later, and bam, you made money. Um, but then on Black Thursday and then again on Black Tuesday, which is October 24th and 29th, 1929, the stock market crashes. Everyone tries to sell their stocks at the same time. It's a panic. The stock market loses 80% of its value. <coughs> Investors lost millions. Everyone loses millions. <clears throat> but the stock market crash started way back. And the, uh, the underlying causes of the stock market crash were the uneven distribution of wealth. Uh, during the 1920s, the rich got richer while the poor did not share in the profits of the businesses. So the poor stayed about the same. They cannot afford to buy those things, uh, to buy the really nice things that were being manufactured. Uh, so demand drops, which leads to layoffs. So demand really drops. And this could end even with not just bank, uh, not just with layoffs, but bankrupting the whole entire company. Stock market speculation. Uh, speculation means gambling or betting on the stock market. Um, during the 1920s, people were buying on margin or borrowing money to play the stock market for a quick profit. Um, this only works if the stock market continues to grow in value. If you borrow money, right? If you borrow money to play the stock market. And then the stock market goes down, then you have to repay that money and you don't have it. So investors lose everything with the crash, including the money they borrowed from the banks, which leads to bank failures. So these banks that were letting people borrow money to play the stock market, they were to blame as well. Excessive use of credit, um, overbuying on credit. So one of the boo one of the causes of 1920s prosperity was consumer spending. People were borrowing money and cheap credit. Right? It was easy to borrow money, so people were buying all sorts of appliances, cars, radios, all the latest gadgets that you could imagine in the 1920s, and they were buying it now and paying for it later. In 1929, it was time to pay all these things back, and just people couldn't do it. <clears throat> More causes of the Great Depression. Overproduction of consumer goods. The moving assembly line and new power sources boost productivity, but with all this boost productivity, you need to have an increased demand. Um, but this actually makes so much stuff people can't afford it all, so you need to sell it to other countries, um, which we'll talk about later. A weak farm economy. Farmers suffer from overproduction as well. They were told to overproduce in World War One, and so they're suffering from overproduction, high debt, low prices, and then to top it all off in the 1930s, right around 1932, uh, there is a dust bowl that further makes times tough for the Midwestern farmer. Government policies, high protective tariffs, uh, reduce global trade, and the Federal Reserve sticks with the gold standard, creating a tight money situation, uh, which means that, you know, it's going to be hard to get money, get your hands on money. Um, global economic problems. Europe never recovered from World War One. United States demand for loan repayments. The Dawes plan helped create a worldwide depression. So that Dawes plan of reparation payments uh, where... Germany was paying England and France so that England and France could pay the United States, and the United States was loaning that money to Germany so that they could pay England and France. That miracle round of money um, just ends because, you know, the United States, when the stock market crash, has no money. So they're broke. Bum, bum, bum. All right, let's switch over to the effects side. Um, 
So those were the causes of the Great Depression. And then there's the stock market crash. And then there's some immediate effects. Um, productivity drops. The gross national product, the total value of goods and services produced within the country, dropped by almost 50%. Banks failure. 20% of banks go bankrupt, wiping out $10 million, $10 million in savings accounts. No, $10 million savings accounts. That's a lot. Um, so even if you didn't play the stock market and you thought, oh, I'm going to put my money in the bank, um, because, you know, money in the bank, you thought the bank was, can go bankrupt. Uh, unemployment. So the number one effect of the Great Depression is unemployment. It reaches a whopping 25% of the population. That's one in four people do not have jobs. The Great Depression also is going to end the Republican domination of the government and lead in a time period of Democratic domination for the next mm, 20 years. Uh, homelessness. Uh, so after people lose their jobs and they can't, abide, uh, can't afford their homes, which leads to foreclosures and evictions. And then you got hobos riding the rails looking for work and food. You got people building like little shanty towns outside of uh, towns, right? Living in the streets, intense cities along the highways. They called them Hoovervilles, um, making fun of President Hoover, who was blamed for the Great Depression because did Hoover cause the Great Depression? Doesn't look, looks up through the nose, doesn't see anything. Um, but he does get blamed because the president is always blamed for the current economic situation. That's just the way it goes. Uh, and then finally, hunger. Um, when After you lose your home and you, lo you lose your job, you lose your home, and then eventually you can't afford to buy food. Um, there are soup kitchens and bread lines, uh, which is our churches and philanthropists would give out free food to the jobless. Uh, but there was lots of beggings. Like the song, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Um, you know, beggars and homeless people. Uh, Hoover's policies. Uh, one of the reasons that Hoover was disliked was because of his laissez-faire government policy and self-reliance. So he believed in laissez-faire government, which is the idea the government should do nothing. Uh, he also believed in, uh, was a firm believer in self-reliance, which kind of goes back to the transcendentals uh, and the whole idea of living on the frontier with no help from anyone. Uh, but people living in cities don't live on the frontier anymore. It's not so easy as going out and, you know, cutting down some trees and building a house and having a farm, right? People work in factories, um, and so this is what they depend on for their livelihood. So times are changing, uh, and laissez-faire government and self-reliance can't keep up. Um, Hoover correctly thought that the Depression would end on its own, like all the previous economic panics, um, which he was probably right. It probably would have ended on its own. It's just people weren't going to wait around for that to happen. Uh, when he did start to change the uh, change the government action, he believed it was up to the local and state governments, not the federal government, to help. Responding to a worldwide depression, the Harley Har Harley Smoot tariff, Harley Smoot tariff, say that, what? <coughs> 1930. Uh, it's the highest protective tariff in history, which is a big oopsies. Um, at a time when you're trying to um, boost your economy, you need to encourage trade. And the Harley Smoot tariff has the complete opposite effect, uh, which world uh, worsened not only our Great Depression, but the entire global Great Depression. Um, a debt mor uh, mor moratorium. So remember the Dawes Act and the re cycle of debt repayments? Um, they proposed to put a stop on those payments, but France, being France, decides not to uh, agree to it. And so the European nations just default. None of them pay their loans back except Finland. Um, which leads to even more, even more indebtedness and worldwide depression. Domestic programs. Uh, Hoover does attempt some domestic programs, but it's too, too, too little too late. This is uh, right in the uh, 1932. Uh, you have the Federal Farm Board attempted to man manage farmers over production issues. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation, uh, which is federally funding government organization, loans money to faltering railroads, banks, and life insurance companies. Basically a bank bailout. Um, Despair and protest. Unrest on farms, failed uh, attempt to stop grain from reaching markets to increase prices, and then a bonus march, also known as the Bonus Army, uh, which was in the summer of 1932. World War I veterans marched to Washington, D.C. to demand payments on bonuses promised for later. They camp near the Capitol building, and Hoover calls out the U.S. Army um, to destroy the camps using tanks and tear gas. Hoover is not very popular at this time. He's attacking World War I veterans. This is a very bad look. This uh, leads right up into the election of 1932. It's Republican Herbert Hoover versus Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt. 
uh, who proposes a new deal to uh, fix the Great Depression. Um, Hoover was so unpopular, anyone was going to win against him. And in this case, Roosevelt wins in a landslide. And Democrats also get majorities in the House and Senate because people are so fed up with the Great Depression. So elections happened in November, but presidents weren't sworn in until March. Um, this is known as the lame duck period. So during this lame duck period between November and March, when FDR was going to get sworn in, uh, Hoover does nothing and neither does Roosevelt. So basically, they're just in a holding pattern as the economy continues to get worse and worse and worse. This leads eventually to the 20th Amendment in 1933, which moves the inauguration of the new president from March to January, which shortens the lame duck period from just like, you know, November, December, and then boom, new president. Um, Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal. Uh, the New Deal is very important. It expanded the size of the federal government, changed its role in the nation and the economy, and greatly enlarged the power of the president. That's the executive branch. Dominant Roosevelt dominated the nation for 12 years and two months, which is just a really long time for a president because, um, fun fact, he's the only president to be elected more than twice. So he broke the two-term tradition sent by none other than our first president, George Washington, um, and just went ahead and ran for president four times and was elected four times. He died in office, which is just something else, too. Uh, FDR, what an amazing person. Um, He's the man. He was rich and educated, connected to powerful Roosevelt family, uh, married his second cousin, paralyzed by polio uh, when he was in his 20s. Um, so he, he lost the use of his legs. He couldn't stand without crutches uh, and leg braces uh, and had to go around in a wheelchair. Um, he was an amazing speaker, though, and he inspired people. So his voice was just apparently was amazing and very calming. Um, he was married to uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, um, and he was uh, she. She was the first active first lady. First active first lady. Yes. Yeah, so uh, up until this point, the wives of presidents basically were just party planners and hostesses when people came to the White House. Uh, but Eleanor Roosevelt was a leader in her own right. She was the president's social conscience and influenced him to support minorities and the poor. If you have any questions about Eleanor Roosevelt or FDR, put them in the comments. You know, I love to answer them with all my knowledge. So, whatever. All right, New Deal philosophy. Uh, so, uh, if Hoover's philosophy was do nothing, uh, FDR's philosophy was do everything. Try it all. Like, let's try just try stuff. Like, if if doing nothing wasn't working, let's do it all. Um, this f quickly became known as the three R's. He promised to help the forgotten man and the poor people. Uh, and this, the three R's of the New Deal were relief, immediate help for people who need money and food, recovery, fix the economy, raise productivity and re reduce unemployment, and reform, fix American economic institutions to prevent future Great Depressions. So usually when people judge the judge or evaluate the New Deal, they evaluate it by these three categories. Um, was it able to provide relief? Was it able to fix the economy, right? Get us out of the Great Depression. Uh, and did it prevent future Great Depressions? FDR uh, had lots of advisors uh, and he organized a brain trust. It's a group of university professors to help shape his policies. He also followed the advice of the economist John Mayard Keynes um, or Keynesian economics, uh, which is government should stimulate the economy by deficit spending, which means just means spending money that you do not have. So borrow money and spend it to get out of a Great Depression. Um, he had the most diverse administration included that included African Americans, Catholics, Jews, and women. Fun fact: Frances Perkins, the first woman to serve in the president's cabinet. Fun. That's just fun. The first 100 days. Uh, so in the for his first 100 days in office. He gets down to business. Uh, Congress passed all of FDR's legislation, at least 15 major laws that created new agencies such as the WPA, the AA, the CCC, the NRA. Um, the, all these agencies eventually become known as the alphabet agencies because there's so many of them that have different, um, I guess, an acronyms. An acronyms? Whatever. They just use the first word to spell whatever. Um, one of the first thing he does is a bank holiday in 1933 to restore confidence in the banks. He closes all the banks, promising on the radio to only reopen the ones that were sa uh, safe to put your money in. This actually works. People listen to him. 
Uh, and very soon, all the banks are back to up and functioning. So way to go. Uh, repealing prohibition. Uh, delivering on a campaign promise, he says people are not happy with prohibition, as we learned in the 1920s, and they weren't following it. And so he's like, hey, we can tax this stuff. We can gr uh, generate revenue. Uh, so he uh, repeals the 21st, uh, the 18th Amendment with the 21st Amendment. So the, remember, the easiest way to remember this is if you're 18, you're not allowed to drink alcohol. But once you turn 21, you can drink. So think 21st Amendment, the reversal or repeal of prohibition. Uh, going back to the radio and being such an effective uh, communicator, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt um, addresses the American people directly over the radio. That's that new technology that was sweeping the nation during the 1920s. Now FDR uses it to speak directly to the American people in a series of things he calls the fireside chats, where he sits down in the uh, White House and then speaks directly to the American people, saying things like, My fellow citizens, don't worry. I have a plan to fix the Great Depression. And people loved it, right? So, um, yeah, people loved it and believed him. And we're like, oh, yeah, he has a plan, and things are going to get better. That's wonderful. Financial recovery and reform programs. Um, the Emergency Banking Relief Act. Uh, this is the thing. That's the law that creates the bank holiday so that he can expect the banks. The next thing they pass is the Glass-Steagall Act. Um, the government regulates banks and limits how banks invest. Uh, it also creates the FDIC, which is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which guarantees individual bank deposits up to $10,000. Um, now it's up to $250,000, um, which is pretty impressive. So you never have to worry about your bank going bankrupt because the government ensures that even if your bank goes bankrupt, you'll get your money back. Um, restricted gold standard to international banking. Uh, you can't exchange dollars for gold anymore. So uh, one of the things that was happening during the 1920s or during the Great Depression was bank runs. People were running to the bank and saying, give me all my money or I'm exchanging this dollar for gold. And of course, the banks didn't have this uh, and neither does, you know, you're draining the treasury. Um, so he basically starts taking us off the gold standard. Uh, the Homeowners Loan Corporation provides refinance to print foreclosures. The Farm Credit Administration provides low interest loans for farms, farmers, relief for the unemployed. The Federal Emergency Relief Administration, FARA, gave millions of federal dollars to state and local governments to distribute food and money to the unemployed. So we're just giving out money here and food. You're hungry, here's some food. You ain't got no money, here, have some money. Um, so this is relief, also known as welfare. Uh, Public Works Administration, PWA, um, gave money to states and local governments to build roads, bridges, dams, and other public works. This is the government attempting to create jobs by uh, building things. Speaking of building things, the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the CCC, employed young men on federal far, uh, lands, especially national parks, to build national parks and then sent the money to the families to help them. Uh, one of the most experimental um, New Deal programs was the Tennessee Valley Authority, or the TVA. Uh, which was a, an experiment in regional development and public planning. It built dams all throughout the Tennessee Valley and Appalachia um, and operated electric power plants to provide cheap electricity. So it was government ownership of electric companies and dams, uh, which was something new, a new direction for the government to take. Industrial Recovery Program. The National Recovery Administration, the NRA, attempted to have reasonable profits for businesses and fair wages and hours for workers by setting prices, wages, and work hours, and the levels of productions. Um, so this is a lot of government control, almost going back to the types of levels of government control we saw during World War I. Um, it has limited success until ruled unconstitutional in Schlechtler, Schlechtler Poultry versus the United States in 1935, which we'll uh, talk about in more detail later. Or if you have some questions... Put it in the comments. Um, Agricultural Adjustment Administration, the AA, paid farmers not to farm in order to increase prices. A, s a great move. I've always thought, you know, what a great thing to um, get paid to not farm. Uh, this was an attempt to, you know, stop the problem of overproduction. It was also ruled unconstitutional. Other programs, the Civil Works Administration and the CWA created jobs. The Securities Exchange Commission, which is an important one for the uh, Star test, the SEC regulated stock market and protects people from fraud and insider trading. Ask, Mar ask Martha Stewart about that. Uh, Federal Housing Administration, the FHA, insured bank loans to build houses. And the U.S. goes off the gold standard. 
that's a lot of stuff. And we're not even done, students. We're not even done, A-pushers. This is seriously a lot of stuff going on here. <coughs> you thought this first new deal was good? How about a second new deal? So hit us with that second new deal. Relief programs. Harry Hopkins leads the Work Progress Administration, the WPA, which spent billions, billions of dollars and employed 3.4 million people. They even paid writers and artists um, and photographers to document the the Great Depression and to create art and to write books, which we'll talk about uh, John Steinbeck and the Graves of Wrath later. The Resettlement Administration, RA, was um, created to give loans to sharecroppers and farmers and small farmers. Uh, reforms, the National Labor Relations Act, also known as the Wagner Act of 1935. Uh, it guaranteed uh, workers the right to join unions and to collect a bargain, and it protected worker rights. So FDR is really going to come out as a champion of the working man, especially industrial working man. So he's going to win over um, the industrial worker to the Democratic Party. Uh, rural Electrification Administration, the REA, provided electricity to rural areas and federal taxes. Uh, to pay for some of this, he increases uh, taxes on the wealthy. Probably one of the most important and long-lasting and uh, significant second New Deal programs will had to be Social Security. Um, so it gets a whole slide all to itself. That's how important it is. Of 1935, so it's a federal insurance program based on automatic collection of payments from employees and employers. Uh, to do this, right, they need to track you because it follows you around. Uh, no matter where you work, so hence the creation of a social security number. Um, the money that they collect from you would then be used, put into a trust fund and used for these four things. So retirement insurance, um, a monthly check for those over 55, now 65. So it used to be if you hit over 55, they figured the average life expectancy was 56, so you would only be alive for a year and then you die and they don't have to pay for a year, but whatever anyways. It's now raised to 65 because people live longer. Unemployment insurance. So Social Security also covers uh, those people who lost their jobs, right? So if you're laid off, the government will pay you for up to six months while you're looking for a job. So it's unemployment insurance. Uh, dis disability. So if you're uh, hurt on the job and you can no longer work or you're disabled, you get a monthly check. Uh, mothers of and dependent children. Uh, so if you are a mother and you have dependent children and your husband dies and he was like the, the guy who was making all the money, um, then the government will give you a monthly check until your children grow grow up. Any question about mother and dependent children? Oh, we're not live, so I guess you'd have to put that in the comments. Um, anyways, that's the Social Security Act of 1935. Very important students, Social Security, the FDIC, SEC, and Social Security are still around. These are lasting New Deal um, things that are still you know, something that could affect you, right? In fact, it does affect you as soon as you get a job. So as soon as you get a job, you're going to start paying to Social Security, right? You can see it on your check. Uh, the election of 1936. Um, so this brings us to the election of 1936. So FDR was elected in 1932. So this brings us to the end of his first four years. Um, the economy is improving, but still weak. Roosevelt is popular with workers and small farmers, but business owners are not impressed. Um, so uh, the Republicans try run Alf, Alf, <laughs> what a great name, Alf Landon versus Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, Roosevelt wins in a rock -a which is like a landslide, except even more. Uh, Democrats have, have a solid new condition uh, coalition where they can count on to win elections. Um, and that is the solid racist South, white ethnic groups and cities. Midwestern farmers, labor unions, liberals, and African Americans in the northern cities. So uh, the New Deal is when African Americans are going to switch from always voting Republican, which is the um, party of Abraham Lincoln, to voting for the Democrats. All right, and that, students, what a whopping really, really, really long episode. This might be our longest episode yet, so hopefully you appreciated all that knowledge. This was a whole bunch of stuff and it's not even the end of the chapter it's only halfway through we have another episode coming up so make sure you like subscribe hit that ring that bell for notifications um, we're still needing to grow more subscribers getting more people this knowledge until next time a pushers keep your heads up this is mr Baylash saying i believe in you you can do it um
Don't give up. Let's go. We're we're getting there. Until next time. Adios.